psychology has the most important role in the profession as far as I'm concerned. Um, we wouldn't have a mental health network or a mental health system if it wasn't for psychology underpinning it. Okay, life can be crazy. You're feeling like you're sinking. Just trying to find a meaning. It's time for better thinking. Yeah, better thinking. Time to tune in. Let's go. Today's interview is with the Australian Psychological Society CEO, Francis Mirabelli. I was really looking forward to this conversation and I think it was really good to hear the thoughts of Francis with regards to the APS, what it stands for, where it's going and what it's trying to achieve. I think, you know, the advocacy work that we talk about with regards to promoting psychology in all uh, aspects of life from, you know, birth all the way through to early intervention, supporting people through difficulties, transitions uh, across the board in many areas all the way through to obviously death as well and grief. Francis talks about bigger issues such as, you know, climate change and, and its stance and in actual fact, you know, leadership globally around that and the recent bushfires, which has been an incredible tragedy uh, and conversation with government about what psychologists can go out and do. Uh, this is probably one that a lot of the psychologists in, in, in Australia are going to want to hear, but for those others as well, I think you'll find this a, an interesting conversation You know, coming from Australian Psychological Society's CEO, Francis Mirabelli. Enjoy. <laughs> Francis Mirabelli, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. I know how busy you are um, as the you know, APS CEO and, you know, your schedule's stretched all over, you know, representing not only psychologists but also the community and making sure that, you know, what we do as a profession, you know, is, is, is something that all can benefit from. So I really appreciate you coming on the show today and you know, spending this precious time. Nish, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Look, I really want to jump in. Uh, this is an opportunity for, for me to ask many, many questions about psychology, what the APS does, um, your role and the like, and also ask a few questions that our members, you know, APS members are also quite interested in. Maybe we'll just start straight from the uh, beginning. What does the APS do? What, what, what does the APS do? What does it stand for? What is it, what's it trying to, to, to achieve? Okay. Well, the APS, um, obviously the Australian Psychological Society, we, we represent all types of psychologists, um, general and all the area, those with areas of practice endorsement. Um, we're here to, we've got two prongs to our business. One is we're here to advocate and lobby for psychologists um, so that, you know, they've Government knows what they, understands what we do, what um, we can provide, the scope of, and breadth of the services that psychologists provide. So advocacy, lobbying. The other side is that we also look at what's happening out in the community and try and promote psychology, psychology and psychologists to the community. Um, that's been a bit of a change in focus since I started. Um, and I think that we're now seeing a lot more um, partnerships develop in terms of the community side of our work. So it's where we do a lot. We provide services for those in private practice um, to help them with their day-to-day -day practice. We also, um, you know, try and help those who work in the public service. We try and help those who work in public hospitals. So our tentacles stretch into every part of psychology. This is going to be a bit of a difficult question for you um, because it is quite broad. You know, the, mm. this question of, you know, letting the government know about what is it that we do. Um, mm. Because there's so many branches of psychology um, and it's a bit of a trick question. What is it that we do? There's, the, 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 there's so much. But uh, are you able to maybe talk about, you know, what, what do psychologists do? What do we offer? Um, obviously, different streams. Sure. Psychology is the only profession other than the medical profession that actually touches people lives, people's lives right from birth to death. So, and in every aspect of their life, whether be it in the community, be it um, in terms of mental health, be it in workplaces, it's everywhere. 
So it, it's so broad, um, and yet in some ways it can be narrow as well. So there's um, academics out there and teach, those teaching psychologists, we mustn't forget about them because they also play an important role. So when I go and talk to government, it is a challenge to not get caught up in one particular area. Like it's really easy just to focus on mental health. But mental health occurs in all different areas. So the challenge for me is to try and bring as many different types of psychologists and different parts of the profession into um, a con any conversation I have with anyone, be it government or other external stakeholders. Does that answer your question, Nish? Yeah, absolutely. So how do you do that? I mean, it's, it must be such a hard, you know, role to, to, to fill, um, trying to represent so, so many of us. And, you know, we do have that breadth. We do have, you know, a lot of value. And, you know, as a clinical psych, you know, I, 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 I tend to swing my hammer and I'm like, you know, I, I um, know how to do clinical psychology. I work with my clients. You know, therapy is my, my, my passion and my love. But there might be someone else who's an org psych, for example, mm. who, who wants to go out and, you know, work with people in the, in the workplace, you know, specifically and more HR roles and support, you know, um, you know, how people transition from role to role or how to get greater, you know, uh, efficiencies out, out, out of, you know, organizations, teams alike. It's so broad. How do you do it? You know, it must be hard to try and, and, and have these conversations with, you know, um, uh, uh, these these other you know, bodies and, and, and organisations that we you know work collabor collaboratively with. Um, I, look, I guess it's easy when you're talking to um, you know if I was talking to the Australian Institute of Sport, I'd be talking to them about sports psychologists, sure. but I also would be talking to them about other psychologists as well because you know as well as in sport enhancement there's also the mental health side of things so you know you've just got to try and tailor who you're talking to um at the time that makes a lot of sense to, to to try and tailor it and and i can see how there's a lot of overlap between uh, you know the different uh, I, I suppose you know schools of psychology and how you know there, there's a lot of that inter interrelation Psychology and psychiatry, you know, I, I often have, you know, uh, clients come in and, and, you know, well, sometimes they'll, um, you know, call me doctor and they'll, they'll ask for medication. Um, there isn't always a, a, a complete understanding of, of, of the difference between the two. Can you talk a little bit about, about that and um, where do you think the, the confusions come from as well? You know, I mean, obviously us in the industry, we, we know the difference between psychologists and psychiatrists, but the community don't necessarily get that as a whole? Mm. I think it's, um, I think there's a lot of work that we can do around promoting psychology a lot more. I think the medical profession's been around for such a long time and so has psychology, but psychiatry's probably been there. It's, it's a newer science, so to speak. Um, so I do get asked this question a lot um, around what the difference is. So a psychiatrist is a medically trained practitioner who has an undergrad in medicine and then goes off and specialises in psychiatry. A psychologist, on the other hand, um, has does an undergrad usually in science and then a postgrad in some other area or an undergrad and honours and then goes on and does their training depending on which pathway you take. They're both sciences, but a psychologist isn't a medical doctor as such. That doesn't mean that um, they can't you know, they don't do a great job and you've got a fantastic role. Psychology has the most important role in the profession as far as I'm concerned. Um, we wouldn't have a mental health network or a mental health system if it wasn't for psychology underpinning it. So whilst psychologists work with psychiatrists, we're the bread and butter, we're the ones where everything happens. So the roles do overlap in some regard, but in the sense that you work collaboratively together, um, but psychi psychiatrists definitely couldn't do their work if psychologists weren't there underpinning and supporting them to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a there's a uh, you know great relationship between between the two. I know that psychology, at least the way that I see it, predominantly focuses on doing that um, you know face-to-face -face 
counseling, uh, whether it be, you know, therapy, working with people um, and spending time, you know, organi- uh, 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 developing plans and strategies, whether it be on an individual basis, whether it be on a group basis, whether it be in a workplace, you know, looking at greater initiatives of, you know, how we can promote, you know, health uh, conversations and the like. And psychiatry is a lot, seems to me a lot, a lot more medically driven where, you know, a typical, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, you know, a, a typical consultation with a psychiatrist might be more focused on a short conversation looking at the medication aspect and, and adjustments on that depending on how someone experiences it. And I'm not suggesting that all psych- psychiatrists do it that way, but my understanding has been that that's what they're there for. It, 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 it's um, like a specialist in, rather than seeing your GP, which I think is a great first first point. Um, people might see a psychiatrist for a little bit more, you know, specific um, uh, medication-related advice. I was trying to be diplomatic, Nish, <laughs> with my response. <laughs> <laughs> Um, You're right. As I said, psychologists underpin the work being done by psychiatrists. So, yeah, they're the people that you go if you have need your medication reviewed. But, you know, the psychologists actually do, you know, implement the strategies, um, do the assessments, make sure that the person's actually progressing with their mental health needs or whatever their needs may be. So, yeah, I was... Just trying to be a bit diplomatic. Yeah, I mean, look, the the the, the show isn't uh, based on diplomacy; it's based on uh, trying to call a spade a spade. But uh, I I think you know we, we have a great relationship with, with with psychiatrists. I know you know locally I here in particular, um, you know a a, a psychiatrist uh, uh, Alex Lim. I've sort of worked with him for for um, you know quite quite some time now, and. Um, you know, there's a real great relationship between, you know, Alex putting a lot of, you know, trust in the work that we do. Um, and likewise, you know, when, when, when medication conversations come up, it's like, you know, go see Alex, you know, we've, we, we, we've got different spaces, we've got different ways, but we are very much, you know, uh, leaning on one another and, you know, our bread and butter is the therapy and, and, and uh, their bread and butter, you know, is the medication and hence why, you know, a first consult with myself is an hour and a half and subsequent, uh, you know, basically an hour. And I think with a psychiatrist, it's often, you know, a, a short appointment, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, um, you know, maybe half an hour. Uh, 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 but uh, mm. I don't believe there are too many psychiatrists doing hour appointments. It's just a different, you know, um, uh, uh, profession. That's right. And you complement each other. You work, yeah. need to work together. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, but very different in what you do. Yeah. It's um, you couldn't. Uh, you both need to exist on and and work hand in glove. Yeah, yeah, spot on, spot on. Well said, well said. Tell us a little bit more about the APS. Um, I, I know that the APS is always a very strong, you know, uh, uh, advocate for. Um, whether it be programs uh, that are you know relevant to society as a whole, whether it be to for sports, if there are you know challenges in particular sports or industries, you know whether it be construction, how do we go out and and uh, you know start the conversation of people you know caring, self caring, and and you know seeking support and the like. Um, are there any programs at the moment that the APS is 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 running or looking to to um, you know uh, launch? Well, one of the most exciting um, programs that we've we've kind of unofficially launched is the Tackle Your Feelings program that we're doing um, as a partnership with the AFL. Um, And that's an Australia-wide partnership. And that's about upskilling the community of Aussie rural coaches in mental health education. So... Where the APS is coming in is we're upskilling the psychologists, teaching the psychologists. The psychologist goes to the football club, creates a relationship with the football club and the coaches. If the coaches trains the coaches to identify any needs that might, they might be seeing in amongst the children, and then creating that referral path back to the psychologist. So integrating all types of psychologists into the sporting um, field. And the program aims to reach 500 clubs, um, which would be 5,000 community coaches 
and that then translate to translates to 50,000 players and parents over the next five years. So that's a great, well, I see that as a great opportunity for psychology to really be in that grassroots um, community based or in those, it, it, out there so that people will understand more what psychologists do. And it will also, and so not only does it create an opportunity for psychology, but it also reduces the stigma amongst kids about the possibility of seeing a psychologist, that it becomes the new norm. It's all integrated. So um, we're really, really excited about that program. Um, we're looking at doing some work with Pain Australia around um, pain management and opioid addiction. Now that Safe Scrip is being rolled out across the country, um, the pharmacists are finding that they're picking up, you know, a lot of people that, you know, used to come into their pharmacy um, every day or every week or whatever. And now that they can trap the scripts, they're finding that um, some of their best clients are possibly addicted to pain medication. So um, we've been doing, looking, exploring that relationship. Um, we've got proposals in with government at the moment around working with the legal profession. So we've um, partnered with Legal Super and the Law Institute of Victoria to put a proposal around a pilot program for um, psychologists to be working with lawyers. Um, so that um, we've got psychologists who are trained up in the needs of the legal profession and the legal profession gets training from those psychologists. And again, about creating relationships into different firms. We've got, um, we're working with the Commonwealth at the moment around a proposal to train um, PA. Uh, workers in PHNs who go into aged care facilities um, around mental health issues. And we're also advocating to government that they should be training those carers and nurses who work in, in residential care facilities to be able to identify mental health issues. Because we know that a large number of residents who go into residential care do suffer from some form of depression if it's not because they're going into care, they probably they may have had it before they went into care. So it's just being able to identify and then get the appropriate services in. So we've got a number of proposals out there at the moment. Um, I'm always looking at new ways to try and promote psychology um, to both government and to the public. Because all this is a PR exercise really at the end of the day and showing people the breadth and scope of work that psychologists can do. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that kind of dawned on me while you were talking is uh, it's almost like a bit of a common theme there around being able to promote uh, psychology and the education around what does it mean to have, you know, uh, not only necessarily just the mental illness, but, you know, uh, mental health difficulties, challenges, and, and, and that there's something that can be done, whether it be, uh, uh, you know, identification that you just spoke about or whether it be the, you know, tackle your feelings program. It's, it's going out and saying, let's put mental health, mental wellbeing, uh, you know, how someone's tracking in life on the agenda That's rather right. than saying that, you know, this is something to to, um, you know, just work through and don't worry about it, it'll go away, kind of saying, no, no, let's identify, put on the table, um, whether it's done through, you know, professionals like ourselves or whether it, it, it's done through, you know, seeking support through your coach or that your law firm is, is, is uh, cognizant of these, these challenges and might be able to be a bit more flexible or whatever, whatever kind of comes up. Uh, there is that conversation that we can all have, you know, whether it be as a psychologist or whether it be, you know, any other profession, there's something we can do for our fellow human. That's right. That's exactly right. And being proactive about it as well. Um, I guess with the legal proposal, you know, a lot of the discussion has been around trying to change the culture of the legal profession 
through this program, mm. um, using it as a tool so that, you know, people think a bit differently about workloads and about hours and billable hours, you know, you've got to meet your targets, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's it's all fascinating work. And if we can get, you know, even half of them up, I think we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we, we, we actually do professional development with a local uh, law firm um, here. Yep. We're meeting up in a couple of weeks. We've, we've been doing so for a couple of years now. <clears throat> um, and, you know, they are, you know, such great, great people. You know, they're, they're, they're very much on the ball of mental health because, you know, most of their clients, particularly in family law, are going through a tough time. Um, and there's this, there's this really nice mm. you know, relationship between, between the two where we can kind of support that 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 side you know with the emotional side the you know the the adjustment side because it's just too expensive to go out and and you know see your lawyer for counseling and the lawyer's obviously not trained mm. to do so they're actually not even interested to 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 do that because that's not their bread and butter they feel out of their depth um and psychologists this is our passion this is our love and we could do a that's right uh, a far better job uh, at doing that so we have this kind of nice relationship likewise you know don't go to a psychologist if you need legal legal advice. Um, you know, uh, you have to go to the professionals. So I can see I can see those relationships ac- across the board. Um, it's great to, to yeah, see. Yeah, so it's the about APS promoting that. Yeah, so it's all about um, connecting psychologists in with these groups. Um, not not all law firms are as um, progressive as the one you're talking about, Nesh. Sure. Let me assure you, <laughs> I've heard some real horror stories um, as part of the development of this proposal. So, yeah, it, 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 it's it's a work in progress. So we're really excited about that one if we can get it off the ground. Yeah, yeah. And look, I think there are there, there are definitely you know, uh, uh, you know quite a number of professions that might be quite quite rigid and kind of stuck in old 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 systems and ideas. Um, and psychology is one of those ones that uh, you know it might appear to be fluffy on the outside but in actual fact it's evidence-based it's scientifically you know driven uh, you know we're, 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 we're talking the same language but we're also meeting an emotional need um, and mm. I, I, I think there are some organizations or, or industries that don't necessarily see that and you know construction is a good example where historically you know construction has been about you know stiff up lip Shut up, get on with the job. You know, we're all we're all men here. Um, it's all about mm. flexing, flexing your muscles, masculinity. You know, long days, being out in the sun. You know, being in the dirt. This is good stuff. When in actual fact, we we know there's a real, real problem with particularly you know youngsters. Uh, you know, the apprentices going through some hard times because you know life is complex in the 21st century, and 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 I think there's a bit of a turnaround uh, certainly from my clients that that I see. A lot of the younger younger um, persons are, are are being encouraged by their management, and like to to see a psychologist, you know, mm. and 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 have a conversation over smoko. So you know, that's it, right. It, I, I think that's the work of psychology and, and the APS that that that's created that. You know, I think the APS has started so many of these conversations, like you know, whether it be tackle your feelings. There's been an awful lot that's happened prior, you know, to to these current programs. That's right. It's all about um, education, really, isn't it? And just having the conversation and getting it started. Um, Yeah, and there's some really great employers out there that do a lot of great stuff, but equally there's some that don't do much great stuff either. So we've (laughs) we've also been involved with the um, Mentally Healthy Workplace Alliance. for a number of years and in the last budget um, the alliance through the national mental health commission was actually given 11 million dollars to work on establishing um, a website for i know it's an awful lot of money for a website but website and resources for actually um, promoting mental health and mentally healthy workplaces so um, I see a big role for our org psychs in that and getting working with the Mental Health Commission to get that up and running. So there's a lot happening out there um, and it's great to be um, involved in all these different projects. 
Yeah, fantastic. Look, I know that um, there's been a, 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 a recent a, a final submission made to the Productivity Commission around you know the role of psychology, the role of mental health, and and you know what that means for Australia, productivity wise and the like. Um, obviously, we're going to have lot, lots of members, you know, APS members. Um, you know, and the community li- listening to the podcast, can you talk about that submission? Some of the things that we've put put forward. Um, you know, what what the APS sort of position is on on you know creating a better future and 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 you know, where where these ideas come from. Yep. Um, so the Productivities Commission. Gosh, that's it's such a big commission report. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it. It's two volumes and. Um, they're over 1,200 pages each. So their first um, lot of findings have been quite interesting. Um, Our proposal to the Productivity Commission focused on embedding psychology into every part of the community. Um, So, for example, you know, if you're homeless, about how you transition from homelessness into housing and how psychology can assist with that. So just... In, in ways that we probably wouldn't normally think about psychology. We really tried to focus on different areas, you know, forensics, put in, we put in stuff about the justice system, um, community psychology, homelessness. We had um, everything, you name it, we put it in there. Uh, basically, we worked very closely with all the colleges to get all their information and with the division DGPP to um, get their input as well. Um, We've also been through a similar process now with our response. Um, We were a bit disappointed with the, a bit, very disappointed with the Productivity Commission's um, initial report. And we're in the process of writing our response as we speak. Uh, We will will be expressing our disappointment. I think there was, it was too medically focused, their report. Um, It focused on psychiatry um, and general practitioners. And in my opinion, um, you know, really disregarded the good work that psychologists do. That's probably a bit harsh. I mean, someone will tell me I'm being really harsh, but um, that's how I felt when I read that report. Um, so we're really going to um, drive the message home of the importance of the largest mental health care workforce in Australia and how it underpins everything that happens in this country and how you just can't um, disregard its, its presence and the work that it does. So, um, yeah, does that, do I sound angry when I say that? Because I'm trying not to be. <laughs> but no, I was really quite no. offended on behalf of the, the profession um, with uh, how they were treated, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you're angry. That, that tells me very much about, uh, you know, your position on promoting psychology and your belief in what we do, you know, that, uh, you know, you, 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 you genuinely come from a position of seeing, you know, what psychologists have been, have been able to, to achieve uh, and continue to do so. That, as you say, we are the, the largest body of uh, professionals that look at mental health, you know, in, in Australia and that we need to have a voice uh, because it's mm. not just our opinions. This, this stuff comes from data. This stuff comes from That's research. That's right. You know, the, 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 this is a voice around what's going to be best for the community and how to best spend taxpayers' dollars. That if we're if, if we're involved, we're going to go out and and you know really make uh, a positive impact, not on just the emotional lives, you know, and and and, and families and and relationships and that humanity side, uh, but it, all this stuff comes down to dollars and cents as well. And 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 we do you know, address those, uh, th- th- those factors. So I think your anger, you know, is well placed. I'm, 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 I'm pleased that, uh, you know, we can, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, you're not just a spokesperson that, that, you know, you're, 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 you're passionate in this space. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, fire away. I'm happy to see that. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes I'm told I'm a bit too passionate, but anyway, um, look, I just think it is, it's tax, you're right. It's taxpayer money. The money needs to be spent wisely and it certainly needs to be spent on registered practitioners. Um, You know, there's a role for everyone, for a lot of different types of practitioners in mental health. 
But if you want the biggest bang for your buck, well, psychology is it really. And that's where they should be focusing. Um, training up more psychologists, the psychiatrists, um, that's not going to achieve any outcomes for the next six to 12 years. It takes a long time to train a psychiatrist. Um, what's the value in that if you're waiting 12 years to get these ex this extra workforce when you've got a workforce that's already there underpinning that work? You need to work in collab collaboratively with each other. And that's what seems to be missing in that Productivity Commission um, report. And that's certainly what we're focusing on as part of our um, response to it. Any, so, yeah, any you touched a raw nerve there. <laughs> no, no, I like it. I like it. Uh, any any sneak peeks as to anything specifically you, you, you'd you like to um, uh, put, put forward in, in how we could be um, uh, integrated more into that report or in, into the, the recommendations that they, or the, whatever it is that they adopt at the end? Well, sneak peek, I think you just need to read our initial report um, yeah. that we put submission to them is we demonstrated on how you could um, integrate psychology in every step of the way in terms of improving the mental health of all Australians. Um, but they seem to have missed that. And with the focus on the medical model, they've left prevention totally out of it. So, you know, we need to shift the focus back to where it counts. And, you know, it's great to be able to treat things when they come up, but psychologists also do a damn good job of preventing issues or preventing issues from getting worse. Um, so, you know, there's been no focus on that. So we're certainly... Um, it's very yeah, interesting. It. It's very interesting what you say because so often with my clients, um, you know, we, when when uh, they initially present, it's all about the crises that's going on, or the you know the the, the gradual stress that's occurred until you know the, the the eruption, the blow up, the the incident that occurred, or you know I just can't handle it anymore. It's it's overwhelming. But over the, you know, months that, that we work together and improvements get made and, 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 you know, through hard work and obviously, you know, work, working closer together, there often is a point where someone is feeling obviously much better, um, feeling much more in control of their, their, their life, can understand their, their biases, how they work, how they operate, why they think the way they think, how they can think differently or to, to help them in decision making, move towards their values more, so on and so forth. But that's not the end of therapy. The, the, the end of therapy is to say, how can you maintain these gains? You know, like even though your initial presenting problem is not, no longer there, uh, in some sense, there's no capturing of the mental health care plans these days of, of, of saying, how do we now do preventative work, uh, whether mm. it be pre or whether it be post the, 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 mm. the, this initial, you know, um, crises? And, and, and that's so important. You know, I, I often talk with, with clients saying, my job is to get myself out of a job as quickly as I, you know, humanly can yeah. with the confidence that you understand how you got into this situation, um, appreciating how you've made changes to, you know, change your, 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 um, your perspective, whether it be contextual as well or, or just, you know, in, in the way that you look at this. And how we can prevent you from having to come back, you know, because this That's isn't right. about dependency that, that, you know, I'm, I'm the knowledge of, I'm, I'm, I'm the uh, source of all knowledge, but rather uh, uh, you are the source of all knowledge and, and, and it's about trying to be able to uh, appreciate how to observe, think, you know, take perspective and, and, and the like so that I become redundant, you know. Mm. Uh, so I think that preventative stuff is huge. I, I, I think mm. that could easily be, you know, um, half of the work that we do. Mm. That's right, exactly. And, and I think there's groups that haven't really been or segments of the, of the pipeline in terms of um, the life, you know, his children, that hasn't been dealt with enough, you know. Mm. There's... The opportunity of having psychologists in schools for use that let's use that as an example i mean how many different issues can that prevent in terms of long-term looking at long-term net effect you know they can pick up dyslexia they can pick up 
you know, other de developmental issues that a child may have, um, you know, bad behaviour may be a result of something else that's happening at home or, um, you know, so that if having that expertise integrated into a school community will have such a long-term impact and that's just one area there's hundreds of others where mm, mm. of other areas where psychologists can really impact like you're saying um and prevent stuff from happening or prevent it from happening again yes. so it's not about yes. just taking um medication and working you know getting through your, your stress I, mean, I don't know exactly what psychiatrists do but you know getting through your stress time and then going off meds and that being the solution you haven't actually changed what's caused the problem which is what you're saying sure, so i think sure. um yeah there's just so many opportunities there it's amazing mm -hmm. no agreed agreed I don't want to hog all the time on 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 obviously the uh, you know productivity commission and and the like. Tell us a little bit about you know some some pressing uh, topics at the moment. I know uh, maybe we can touch on bushfires in a moment, but you know we've got we've got a a, a very uh, fast adapting or uh, fast changing world, and there's a requirement of huge ad adaptation from from all of us. You know, we've got climate change issues, we've got you know the internet, and 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 you know the the uh, uh, the volume of consumption that it, it it brings, and how we're all online and now we're all connected forever. You know, we've got obviously these bushfires, so we've got na 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 nature sort of driven stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about you know what does the APS do in 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 these sort of spaces? I I think and I I believe if you can maybe um. Uh, correct me, but there's also been an international pledge by the APS around some of these issues. Mm. Maybe you can talk about, you know, um, you know let, let's start with, you know, the climate stuff first. Climate change? Sure. So um, the APS has done a lot of climate change work um, and it certainly preceded my time. So we're um, probably internationally um, one of the leaders in this area. Um, and that's something that we should all be really proud of. Um, in November last year, I was really fortunate to have been invited to an international summit um, on climate change that was held in Lisbon. And part of the pledge was that we would uh, agree to work together to see if we can influence climate change on a global level. So there was 43 different associations represented there. And um, we're now going to be meeting over subsequent months to try and work through everything that was discussed at Lisbon and um, work towards the possibility of maybe having some sort of international campaign um, into the future. But we've certainly been um, very proactive here in in Australia, so we've got you know we've got policies, we've got um, resources on climate change. Our Psych Week um, last year was dedicated to climate change, and and the result you know we worked with younger children. We had the Facebook page and the issues that climate change is causes um, and, and impacts that it's having on our kids were. Um, explored through that study that was done there. Um, so we've, um, we've done a lot of stuff here. Um, we've done a, lot, a fair bit of media around climate change um, and we do raise it when we do talk to government. Um, and everyone, you know, initially says to me, Francis, you know, what psychology got to do with climate change? I go, well, actually, it's got a lot to do with climate change because psychology is all about changing the way people think. And who better to lead, you know, to lead that than a psychologist? Because you can influence people on an amazingly large scale. So um, why not tap into that and um, use that to do good for our environment and for our country and our community and everyone? So um, it's, it's been an interesting time so far, but I think we've still got a fair journey to go. It's great to have a voice on the, on the international stage. 
you know, to, to, to be yeah. leaders, you know. I, I, uh, one of the things that I love is being Australian and I, I love it when Australian and Australia and Australians and Australian organisations, you know, put their best foot forward and say, we're going to stand up for something, we're going to believe in something and, and, and to be, you know, a leader, you know, among many organisations to say, you know, we're going to do something about this, that we're going to commit, you know, to this conversation, we're going to keep pushing it forward, um, you know, is it, it, heartwarming. Yeah, so look, it was really, um, it was really quite interesting because um, I've always felt that we could probably do more on climate change. And when I gave my presentation, because um, all 40, 43 of us had to present uh, what we're doing, um, you know, I got a standing ovation about our work. And I was just blown away because I thought, I didn't think we were doing enough. And yet, you know, we're doing so much more than everyone else. So, but that doesn't mean, you know, we just sit back and don't do anything else. We still need to absolutely be out there and and driving it because we can see what the impact the changing climate is having on our communities here at Australia. We've got the bushfires, we've got the drought. There's so many crises. We can't just let it go. So it's certainly high on our priority. Um, which leads me to the bushfire um, crisis that we've had. <coughs> so um, I'm not sure if many people who listen to your podcast would know that the APS has a long-standing relationship with the Australian Red Cross. And um, through that, we have what we call our disaster response network. Um, where we work with the Red Cross and send out volunteers to provide psychological first aid or even more therapy should it be required um, to frontline personnel and volunteers. Um, So that's been a long-standing program. Um, That was activated uh, in between Christmas and New Year when um, the fires in Gippsland really took off. Um, And it's now um, activated in New South Wales as well. Uh, It took a bit longer in New South Wales because they had other resources out there that they were tapping into, but it's just become so extreme now um, that the call for psychologists has become wider. Um, We've done a lot of advocacy work with the federal government around the Disaster Response Network um, and what we do. We've, um, we've actually put in a proposal to government um, to try and get our hands on some of that $76 million for our psychologists. Um, so what we've got is the doubling of the um, Medicare sessions for those in bushfire or were affected by the bushfires. Um, details will follow, everything's gonna be on our website. So I recommend to everyone that um, the latest up-to-date information, take a look at our website. As we get intel, we'll put it up. Um, There's been announcements that um, telehealth um, has been expanded and that is also available for up to 20 sessions as well. Details to follow. Um, We've um, also, been actually had a meeting with the minister around how to best allocate um, the $76 million. So whilst that's been broken up into very large groups, we're still in discussions with them around um, further detail into the future. So um, we've absolutely been involved right from day the first day back. It was um, after the break. So we're we're part of that whole disaster planning, which is fantastic for the APS because it's never had that sort of role before. So um, we've certainly been able to elevate the profile of the organisation so that we're now considered um, to be able to respond to these sort of emergencies. Um, The other thing that we've been talking to government about is around training training for first responders, um, also training for psychologists around disaster response. Um, So I'll have, as information comes through, um, 
it's a day by day proposition and I envisage that it's going to be like this for the next month or so that we're going to be learning and hearing new things. Um, every day there just seems to be another announcement of what they're doing and that's on a federal level. There's also state by state. There's um, everyone's planning their disaster response and we're trying to get into all the state governments as well to ensure that psychologists are represented. I think it's such an important conversation that uh, we are uh, represented in, in, in those and, you know, clearly, you know, the work that you're, you're yourself, you know, the APS, you know, prior, prior um, uh, staff and, and, and COs and presidents and like have, have done is to make sure we are in the conversation. I was quite, uh, um, you know, pleased to, to, to have been invited by the Federal Minister of Health, Greg Hunt, to, for a, a conversation with some RFS uh, personnel there. It was uh, the gentleman Brendan and, and, and Victoria there. Victoria had actually lost her home um, mm. while she was, you know, saving other people's homes and, you know, some um, horrific stories. Um, and I, I think to, to, to have these open conversations and for, for our, you know, our government, you know, on both sides uh, in, in these sort of situations to be able to come together and, and, and see the importance of, you know, mental health, because this is going to have far reaching effects into many years. Um, this isn't a, a crisis of today this this is something that we need to kind of you know plan for into the future of how to support you know people for for years to come you know and vicky in particular you know although she was holding strong you know in front of the cameras and and, and being tough and 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 uh doing what australians do best which is you know collect themselves when things get hard um mm. she's she's someone who's hurting she's lost her home she she thought her her daughter had died and passed away, um, tearing up just talking about it, just, just remembering yeah. her, saying her, her daughter's last words to her were, smoke's coming in and then the phones were cut off. You know, oh, no. This is trauma stuff, you know, and, and, and mm. you know, her home's, you know, she's already got a, a payout from, from insurance, but she's saying, you know, her words were something like, you know, what do I do with that? Like, I know how to make a lasagna. You know, I, I can go out and fire fires. Well, I don't know how to organize to have, you know, my, my, my house repaired or rebuilt. Or I, I don't know where to start, you know, and this is just going to be an ongoing journey for, for her and let alone, you know, the you know, great possibility of, 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 you know, PTSD and all sorts of, sorts, sorts of um, you know, challenges for her and the community. You know, and Brendan uh, w w was amazing in talking about his stories. The other RFS member, you know, he was in tears as well. This is this is real, um, you know, uh, heavy stuff that psychologists need to be a conversation of. How do we go out and 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 support these these communities to to you know first of all come to terms with what's happened in this first you know uh, disaster response, but then how to how to regroup, how to rebuild, how, how, how to come together and, and, and you know, um, how do you see, you know, psychology playing a part in that? Uh, look, psychs are definitely going to be, it's, it's going to be a long-term recovery as you have already stated um, and they certainly need to be embedded. There's almost um, a role for community psychology, you know, psychs, um, need to be funded, this is what we're talking to government about, need to be funded in a way that they can just turn up to these um, town planning meetings and just be there to, to listen and have people, those, you know, interactions that, that you have while you're having, getting a cup of coffee, little chit chat. Because I think what we're going to see in the next few years is there'll be those that come forward straight away and then there'll be those that over the years develop issues and don't even realise what's actually going on for them. And that's why community psychology or psychology needs to be embedded into the community and be there every step of the way. Um, I think that those in local areas, you know, when you're planning on the rebuild, you know, not only do the communities need to be involved, but you need someone there when they're thinking about it because that's another you know, so that they can again be part of be part of the rebuild. About 
embedding it every step of the way. So we, we've got a disaster response group that um, of experts that are certainly informing how we talk to government and what we're asking from them to make sure that psychologists are there to provide the best service possible. Now, uh, funding is a bit tricky because, you know, MBS is limited to how to sessions and how that works. Um, so we're certainly talking to government about looking at funding, different forms of funding for psychology, particularly in this instance. So there's the federal and then there's the state and everyone's trying to work together, but it's, it's quite interesting. Um, I was on a teleconference this morning of, there was 47 of us on the call. That's 47 different organisations who work in the mental health space who were talking about what each of them are actually doing. Um, it was quite interesting and I'm proud to say we were the only ones actually doing something right now. Um, we were prepared. We've got our resources online. Uh, we've got resources for the public. We've got resources for practitioners who are members, you know, just go into the portal, it's all there for you. Um, we've got our training already set up, ready to go. Um, we've got the disaster response network. So we were all systems go, whereas everyone's still way back there thinking about, you know, resources and putting stuff online, but there's just so much duplication. And so that meeting was about trying to minimise the duplication as much as possible and to get services working together so that um, people on the ground actually have a much better response and a much better service. So there's, there's just so much going on at the moment, Nesh. It's, um, it's head spinning. I, I don't think I've had as many teleconferences um, in my life that I've had in the past week. Just wow. constant <laughs> updates, yeah. It's just every day there's something different. And this is really about getting psychologists on the ground right now. This is actually about saying we have systems in place, we've got resources in place, you know, we've looked at the, the, the disaster response, uh, you know, planning previously. We need, you know, funding these sort of situations to go out and, and, and say, give us the green lights to put more bodies out there, not suggesting we don't have people out there now, but, but give us a greater opportunity to, to do this initial, um, you know, uh, crisis work when, when people really need it so they're not you know, floating around by themselves you know scratching their heads in in, in all sorts um, if we can be involved we can kind of intervene early um to, to, right. to get better better outcomes for the future that's right and it um so i wouldn't recommend to anyone to just hop in the car and go to a bushfire area um absolutely recommend that you do not do that sure. um any form of assistance needs to be coordinated. Um, through us, we, as I said, we work with the Red Cross, but you know, if there's another community organisation that someone wants to volunteer at, that's fine, but just make sure you go through an organisation that's in the area, um, because certainly our advice that we've been receiving from government is people need to stay away, because it's just, you know, the first instinct is to hop in the car and go and do something, um, but it's not always helpful. So um, mm. particularly when the risk is still imminent and things change so quickly, um, everyone, you know, government's certainly saying everything needs to be coordinated through a central point as much as possible. And that's what that, that you know, the 47 different organisations, you know, clearly demonstrates that, that uh, everyone's doing their thing but, you know, it's not coordinated. I know that uh, uh, I've read about, you know, so much of the Australian community going out and, you know, donating water and, you know, um, toothpaste and blankets and God knows what, you know, everything you can think of that, 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 that people have lost in the fires or might need immediately who have been, uh, you know, pushed away from their homes and, and the like. But the coordination, you know, is just not there. And, and in actual fact, there's been a, there's been even a pushback on saying, please don't send any more. We, 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 we don't know That's what right. to do. We don't even have the trucks available to take this stuff down yet. You know, it, it's, it all comes from a great place of support and love and compassion and, and, and empathy and the like. 
but we, we, we we've got another problem you know this is a logistics coordination coordination problem which takes me to the point of and obviously you've probably got more insight than than, than the rest of us what what is the the issue between federal and state sort of sort of, sort of stuff what what goes on on the hill you know uh, i mean i'm in canberra so i drive past the hill um <clears throat> you know parliament's the my 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 uh, route in and out of of, of work um so you know, I look at, I look up there every day, and I go, "What well, what's going on up there? What am I not seeing? Why can't we get together? You know, federal, state? What's the nonsense that that that, that goes on? If I can be a bit cheeky." Oh wow! Okay, well, um, oh, Lee is just giving me the don't answer this question <laughs> <laughs> look. <laughs> you know, I have to push it um, into you. I've got to try. And yeah, do. yeah. So this is going to be a really diplomatic answer, right? Of course, I think it of comes course. Down to you know, everyone's protecting their patch. Um, and traditionally, uh, disaster management is state-based issue. Um, and then I think what we've seen in this instance is that um, you know it's overwhelmed states. So I know here in Victoria, Daniel Andrews, you know, with Malakuta, Danny Malakuta, rang and asked the government, the feds to send the army and the, the Navy out to help with the evacuations. Um, so it's really brought to the forefront the whole issue of when, when do they start working together and how do they work together. And I think for the first time, we've actually seen an acknowledgement that it hasn't worked well in this instance. Um, and that's, a, that's not, it's not good that it happened, but it's good that it's been acknowledged. And it's great that there's a willingness to work through what has worked and what hasn't worked with a view of improving it into the future. So this might actually be a turning point for states and federal government actually working together. Um, you know, politics and power, it's, you know, it's what it all boils down to at the end of the day. But, you know, there, there comes times where you've got to put that aside and just knuckle down and work collaboratively. And I have to say, I am seeing it um, in a lot of discussions that I've been having with the feds or with the state. They're talking about talking to each other and trying to make sure that they're not duplicating services, that they're working together so that people are getting the best possible outcome. That's all positive. It's so fascinating and, and interesting to look at these sorts of things because it seems to be a pattern that human beings kind of go through no matter which way we look at it, you know, where, whether it be, you know, um, uh, sort of work-related clashes, dilemmas, you know, people arguing over the turf around, you know, who's doing which project or, um, you know, do, do we go out and get extra resourcing for, you know, additional person, you know, is this our work or their work? There shouldn't be our work, that's their work, you know, pushing work back. It's this human sort of thing, you know, if, if we try to organise a, you know, I don't know, a Christmas street party or something, you know, maybe two residents you know both want to make cupcakes and they argue about you know who's going to make the cupcakes and that you know someone else shouldn't and you know someone makes better cupcakes and so it's almost like it's inherently in us you know to to protect mm. uh you know wh whatever it is that we, we we feel we need to 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 you know protect but it kind of um you know nice to hear that some of that stuff drops away when there's a you know a real need you know like this is a real crisis a real disaster there are countless you know homes you know uh, properties being being destroyed burnt probably as we speak um there's there's wildlife that you know my understanding is is you know probably in the millions plus now that that, that have been mm -hmm. killed wiped out some being you know on that endangered list um, or, or being pushed towards that, or at least the habitats being, being, being destroyed. You know, we've got people, uh, you know, human beings who have lost their lives, you know, protecting their, their, their number one asset. I'm not suggesting people should, should go out and do that, but there are, there are lots of, you know, farmers in particular, people who've got property around, you know, trees and the like have said, 
no, no, this is my family home. I'm going to stay here and I'll, and I'll, and I'll fight. And unfortunately, tragedies occurred. Um, there, there's all sorts of awful, awful, you know, stories. And it's nice to hear that sometimes we can drop all the, the you know, political stuff thing and kind of say, come on, you know, you know this is Australia. It, it, this isn't about New South Wales versus Victoria versus, you know, Queensland versus versus. It, it, this is about us as a, as, as a community or, you know, if it's the global thing, this is climate change. This is the world. This is mm. one people or you know one planet. Um, That's right. Yeah, I, I know That's there's right. some it affects all of us. that go on, but but um, you know, it's nice to hear that, that there is some collaboration. You know that 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 that, that, that you've seen. You know, and, and people really striving to work together for for better outcomes. Yeah, so it has been um, refreshing and a refreshing change to see governments working together. Um, but one thing that your viewers or listeners won't um, have heard is that uh, here at the APS, we've had an outpouring of support from our international colleagues, which has just been fantastic. Um, So uh, some of that's gone out through the APS update, um, but we're certainly in everyone's thoughts. So it's it's really hit home internationally. what's been happening here in Australia. So I just thought everyone would like to know that we have had um, a lot of emails and letters of support from people overseas offering their condolences and um, any support that they may be able to provide, which is, it's great to see the international community also banding together. Mm. There's that uh, connectedness uh, through all the work that's uh, that's been done, but also on that humanity level. Um, that's that, right. That, that's what's so beautiful about psychology is, is you know, we're human orientated, you know, uh, I'm not suggesting that we don't think about, you know, animals and the climate, uh, you know, as, 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 you know, a one big organism and, and, and we're all part of the, part of the one thing, the planet, but, um, you know, we, we, we're compassionate, you know, we, we, we really do genuinely care. It's an amazing thing with, um, you know, all the psychologists that I meet, that that's just the thing that we do. It, it's kind yeah. of like, it's in our fabric. That's right. That's exactly right. And it's, it's, um, it's nice. It's been good to see. What are your hopes moving forward, changing gears a little bit? What are your hopes mm-hmm. for, for psychology, um, you know, for the APS? Uh, I know that uh, we've had some change uh, in, 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 in um, you know, how psychologists are, re- are registered and different pathways and obviously different um, uh, uh, schools of, of, of um, you know, practice and the, and, and the like. What's your hope? What, what do you kind of, um, uh, kind of um, aspire to when, you know, your head's about to, you know, fall on the, 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 the pillow? Hopefully you're not thinking about this all the time, but um, <laughs> you seem passionate. So what, where, where does your mind go in terms of, you know, the ideals? Where, where, where do you hope we can go one day? Ideally, um, I'd, the first thing is I'd really like to stop this loss of diversity within the profession um, as much as possible. Uh, that's been a real concern um, of mine. Not that there's a bad thing with, you know, everyone wanting to do clinical psychology, um, but what we're seeing is the other schools of psychology are actually closing down. So there's the courses are no longer going to be available if the current trend continues. So, um, and I think that would be a loss to the profession, but it would also be a a huge loss to the community. You know, if, if you don't have the different types of psychology out there, Um, particularly once you start to understand that what everyone does and how it impacts on different on people's lives, basically, in many different ways. So um, I think there's a real need for for HODSPA, us, everyone to really lobby hard to ensure that that diversity is maintained. Um, I guess we tried to start, kick that off by, in our MBS submission in the white paper, actually suggesting that all areas of practice endorsement be paid equally, um, to acknowledge that everyone has an extra, you know, has that extra level of expertise in their area. 
so that that would then encourage people to specialise in those other areas other than clinical, um, which is, it's a roundabout way of trying to then get the demand up for the courses, which will then mean the courses don't close down and you continue with that diversity. Um, because yeah, I really see that as tragic if, if mm. we lose that. Um, and some of those areas of practice endorsement have actually been going backwards rather than going forward. So there's a real need for that to occur. Um, I'd like to see uh, more of a focus on research in psychology. Um, I, I think we need to really promote psychology as a science because it's the science that underpins this profession. So we need to have a more active role there. And then also taking that science and translating it into best practice psychology therapy. Um, I think we've got, we've got a role in that. Um, we've got a role of working with the universities to make that happen so that we're leading the conversation rather than others leading it. Um, what else? Um, I'd like to see, uh, this is probably veering off psychologists as such or the profession, but a decrease in stigma and how we can achieve that. Yeah. Um, stigma around mental health, but also stigma around seeing a psychologist because sometimes people see that as an issue, they have an issue with that. So we just need to work out how we can best address that. Um, I'd really like to see the APS take a greater role um, internationally and particularly in the Southeast Asian area. Um, I think we've got a lot to offer um, and we just need to be a lot more proactive around that and offering that so that we can um, also, you know, work well with our neighbours and offer any services that we can to them, but also learn from their experiences so it's a two-way street and get a better understanding of their culture and, and what their requirements are. Membership, member services, what else can we do for our members? We should be exploring that. Um, I'd like the APS to do a membership survey this year so that we can... Um, better tailor our services to our members and what their needs are, um, our branches, um, how do we underpin those better, how do we help better, how do we prom help promote what you, you're doing at a branch level. That's the greatest strength of this organisation is the branches and the networks that we have within the profession. Not only do they bring that sense of community to the organisation, but they're a great, that's where all our ideas and we need that information to be able to feed that back to government. So how do we um, promote that and make that work better? So there's, yeah, I've got a lot that I want to do this year. This year, wow. I'm looking at the list and saying this is uh, you know, incredible because these are all really, you know, strong points that, that, that need to be, you know, uh, raised, uh, you know, have advocacy for you know that that you know the diversity and special of specialization you know in, in psychology is, is so important that that uh you know we who wants to go out and lose what we've already gone out and gained that that science has told us is is effective and now because commercially it's not viable or some sort of nonsense we're starting to lose that, that that's no different to saying oh, look, you know, we need to put more houses out there, so chop down those eucalypts and let's not worry about, you know, the uh, endangered, uh, you know, possums or the you know, endangered uh, koalas that are out there. What, why would we go out and, and, and create damage? And, and uh, you know, I think that diversity is, is, is enormous research. I'd have to agree immensely with that. I think, I think uh, uh, you know, it's, we, it's kind of interesting. If we look at all the tech companies of the world that basically, you know, dominate the world at the moment you know whether it's your amazons your apples your you know your facebooks and that and the like you know they're worth the most amount of money and and, and therefore they have distribution of knowledge and 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 the like you know google's our our, our go-to um mm. but we kind of look at look, look at all at all of those 
they put the most amount of money into R&D, research, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What informs, you know, best practice for our users, you know, what do they want? The same thing is is here, you know. We we want early intervention as as, as parents for our children, you know. We we want early intervention as, as spouses, you know, for for, for our mm. loved ones. We we want them to get support when they're struggling, and 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 forget when they're struggling. How about when they're just having a bit of a tough time, you know? We we need to have you know facilities for people who are you know in in, in crisis, suicidal, whatever it might be, you know, access to GPs, access to so you know obviously our um, uh, 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 um, uh, our other colleagues in psychiatry and, and obviously access to psychologists, you know, that, that we need to be able to see a trained professional psychologist that's using evidence-based therapy that's very likely to go out and help. Why? Because the that's science right. tells us it will. You know, we're not just going out and guessing. Uh, you know, anyone that's, that, that, that's in need and, you know, is, is willing to do some work because you've got to be open-minded. This isn't an easy type of, type of uh, you know, thing to reflect at your life and make a, you know, a vast and, and large difference. It's this. I, I love the idea of, of research. And I must say, though, I think you guys have already, um, you're already, uh, I, I think, 70% of the way with stigma. Um, I think okay. that might be ambitious. I think mean, maybe it's a little bit ambitious, but, but I genuinely think that uh, this conversation um, that, that, that's ongoing, every second article is about mental health. And that's, that's led and, and, and driven by the APS, you know, the work that the APS has done, particularly with, you know, getting it in the system of Medicare. Um, GPs talk about it all day, every day. And when they're talking about it all day, every day, so is everyone else, you know, and mm. you know, great you know uh, relationships with them i think i think we're actually there with stigma you know okay. it's all around, um, but uh, there's obviously plenty of work to do but i think we've done an exceptional job so you know um you know i i, I think we can tick that one off as as uh um uh, half baked we're already there you know we're, we're, okay we're still no, bake it. one thing off my list that would be my, my feedback <laughs> Okay, no, no, that's that's one thing off my list. <laughs> <laughs> and before we uh, finish up on no time, time's catching up on us. How do you look after your mental health? You know, you're an incredibly, you know, bit bu- 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 busy person. You're, you know, going from meeting to meeting, as you say, you haven't had bu- bu- this amount of, you know, teleconferences and the like with the crisis that's going on and trying to inform, you know, best practice and where we can go out and best spend money and the like for, for you know, bushfire and the crisis, uh, the, the um, you know, climate change and the like. How do you look after yourself? Um, I like to take – well, I live near the beach, so I've got two dogs. Um, if anyone follows my Twitter feed, uh, I'm always tweeting about them. Uh, Charlie and Alfie, so they're Kelpie crosses. So you can imagine they're very active. So um, what's your yeah, Twitter I, name? What, what, what's your Twitter name? How do we find you on Twitter? Oh, uh, FL Mirabelli. So I've got Leah telling me. FL Mirabelli. Mirabelli. Yeah. Good to know that. Um, you, know, it's, you, you, you know that that's exactly how I do it as well. I don't know about any of my social media stuff. So I've got someone else looking after it for me. I'm not very good. Oh, there. No, no, no. I do. Hang, oh, no, no. Hang on. She hasn't tweeted about my dogs. <laughs> no, 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 not the tweets, but um, sets it all up. You know, like uh, you know, I do my posts and all that, but but not not the um, you know, how do you set it up and put your face on it and you know all that sort of craziness. Too, too complex yeah, that's true. Admittedly, I set up the account. They made it look good. So uh, yes, um, yes, I'm not going to take any credit for right. that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I like just going for long walks, taking the dog for a walk. Um, and in the last six months, I've actually taken up running. So um, I'm no expert, but uh, I'm getting there. So I'm up to three kilometres. So I'm pretty proud of myself. What was the inspiration behind running? How did that happen? Uh, it might have been my mental health. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you a little little insight. I, I'm not a runner. I've always hated running. Um, I listened to a um, Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, he was interviewing a gentleman called um, David Goggins, who's kind of been labelled as uh, you know the world's toughest man in terms of you know. The crazy stuff he's done, but he actually talks about this really powerful psychological stuff around 
building a, a, a mental callus. So instead of like a callus on your hands, he talks about yeah. a mental callus. And the idea mm. is you've got to go out and push yourself beyond what you are comfortable with. Um, and interestingly, he's, he's, um, uh, you know, he's done lots of ultra marathons and all sorts of stuff. And, and he actually did an incredible run even without any training. And I just thought to myself, well, doesn't that apply to everything? I mean, psychology is constantly doing a you know, systematic desensitization, asking people to, you know, address their fears, to look at their fears, to talk about their fears, to feel the emotions around their fears. This is what we do, you know? Mm. So I went, I'm going to go for a run. And my first run was mm. seven kilometers. Oh, amazing. I'll tell you what, I'm though, impressed. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you what, it didn't even, it wasn't even hard. It, it, all it is, this is the way I kind of go, maybe because I was quite, quite motivated, um, is I've always thought that running has to be done hard, that you've got to go out and run fast, that you've got to be puffed mm. out. Like that's called a limiting belief. You know, this is yeah. nonsense. And once I changed that perspective, I could run, I, I think I could run today 15Ks if I needed to, you know, because what it is is jogging. Yeah, and I don't need to be puffed out where, you know, my heart's kind of racing, my, my, my calves are, are killing me, my legs, you know, hurt, so it's like, you know, like buggery. No, no, I can, I can just go for a jog. Um, mm. So there's my little piece of advice. I, I think you can uh, blow your three kilometres out of the water. Um, just so you're setting me a challenge, are you, Nish? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. I'll have to get you back on the podcast <laughs> to uh, hear how you went. Well, you know, actually, if I'm being truthful, how the whole running thing started was that I, I started Pilates about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, the instructor said to me, she goes, oh, you know, um, do you run? I go, no. I've never run my whole life. I don't run anywhere. I walk, <laughs> I walk for miles, but I never run. And she said, okay, we're going to set you a challenge, three kilometres by the end of the year. And so that's what did it. She challenged me. I'm a sucker. There you go. Fell for it. Hook, line and sinker. <laughs> now, now I know your button. All, all I now you do know my button. Out. So Challenge don't you. double it because you never know. I might triple it on you. <laughs> <laughs> Francis, it's so wonderful to have you on the show. Um, you know, really appreciate you know, all, all the work that, that you do. You know, I'm clearly a huge, huge advocate of, of psychology having a voice. And, and I think that's what the APS stands for, you know, putting psychology uh, in the conversation, you know, based on the evidence-based research that we've done, that we can provide service value for the community, for people on an individual level, from a community in terms of policy, you know, and how we can go out and improve people's lives. So, you know, a big thank you to you and, 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 to the APS, you know, the, the whole, you know, uh, body, um, I think advocacy and, and work and, and, and consideration and, and consultation with all of us members um, and in actual fact, you know, and, and others, um, you know, it, it is amazing. So um, yeah, I hope some, some real positive things, uh, uh, you know, are, are there on the future for, for the APS and, and, you know, I hope many of your, your aspirations um, and uh, goals uh, work out. Um, happy to uh, you know, be behind them at any time. Thanks, Nish. Um, thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. But um, look, I've just got to say, I have a fantastic team around me um, who are dynamic, you know, willing to put in the hours and go that extra mile. So I can't do this on my own. And um, it's fantastic being part of a great team. So uh, I look forward to catching up with you again next time I'm in Canberra and thanks for the opportunity. Definitely drop in next time you're in, give, give, give me a call. We can have a coffee and, um, yeah, and happy and happy to have you back on the show at some stage. If, if, if a particular program is being launched or something that we can talk about details of it, you know, how, how people can go out and access those services and the like, I think, uh, you know, really, really worth, worth, um, you know, promoting those sorts, sorts of things, having that conversation. So um, thanks. And um yeah, catch up next time you're in Canberra. Okay, thanks, Nish. See ya. If you enjoyed this podcast, please support it by going to iTunes and putting a review. Subscribe, share it via social media, and tell others about it. Start a conversation. It's listeners like you that make this 
able and possible and why we bring in these guests to go out and share their knowledge and resources. And just lastly, if you are a psychologist and you want to go out and be part of a bigger team, develop your experience and get into some exciting work, come to strategicpsychology.com.au forward slash careers and reach out. I'd love to hear from you.